Hi everybody, it's the Keto Nomad. Hey Ketosians. Yeah, that's the new name for Keto Watchers, Ketosians. I am going to make some pork rind breaded shrimp, pork rind coconut shrimp. And five shrimps is two carbs. So, I don't know, what are we making here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I think I'm making eight. So, it's going to be probably about three carbs for the amount of shrimp that I'm making. And it just goes to show you that just because you're on keto doesn't mean that you can't have some of the other luxuries in life. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, let's get going here and make these and fry them up. Yum, yum. I can't wait. I got egg wash, got my crumbs, and we're ready to go. Okay, we're gonna put our shrimp in the egg wash and then we're gonna dip it in the pork rind crumbs. And I'm using avocado oil in the frying pan. We're gonna stick it in the avocado oil. Oh, I forgot to say, I'm also putting coconut on there. <laughs> you forgot that part. Okay, so. I'm doing the egg wash, the coconut, and the pork rinds. There is a couple I just did with coconut. But then I thought, ah, let's put them in the pork rinds. So, it looks yum. They're frying up. And then after we finish getting these all battered up and in the frying pan, we're going to make some cheese balls. So what I did was I just mixed the coconut and the pork rinds together and I put some egg, the egg wash in the bowl with them and I made little balls like I did previously in my other video when I made the cheese balls and I stuck them in the fryer and fried them. Look at this. Doesn't it look great? It's pretty easy recipe. You just make little balls out of the, the cheese and the crumbs, the pork rind crumbs and the egg. Mix them all together, get a good consistency. And then add some Parmesan cheese in there. So Parmesan coconut cheese balls and coconut shrimp. And then I use the Rayos pizza sauce and we have some dipping sauce. I'm going to cut into this one so you can take a look at it and see it. It was really good. I mean, really getting into these cheese balls. They're great for hors d'oeuvres. Just perfect. Mmm, I could taste the coconut. Tastes really good. Now, I don't know that I would necessarily dip that in pizza sauce, but it tasted okay. Mm-mm-mm. I like it. Probably would be good in like ranch dressing. Mmm, yum. That sounds good, ranch dressing. It's good to me. That's a go. Thanks for joining me. And just because you're on keto doesn't mean you can't have 
snacks and treats and hors d'oeuvres. You just got to find the ones you like and learn how to make them. Find the ones you like and then convert them to keto. So if you're a keto lifestyle person, you still have those nights, or those days, when you want a snack. Even though you have a suppressed appetite, you're really not as hungry as you used to be. And I'm Italian, and I like my Italian desserts and custards, etc. And I love tiramisu. So, mascarpone cheese, mascarpone cheese, mascarpone, however you want to pronounce it, it has zero carbs. Once the seal's broken, it says you should eat this within five days. So, this is a brand new one. But it lasts a long time. I'm going to put some mascarpone into my little bowl. I'm going to eyeball it. Like I mentioned in my previous video, some of us Italians, we don't measure things. We just eyeball it. I'm going to put some mascarpone in there, and I'm going to put some monk fruit and a little bit of um, vanilla extract that I brought back from Mexico and some whipping cream instead of eggs. I'm going to substitute eggs for whipping cream. Um, I haven't decided yet if I'm going to use, I think I'm going to use this whipping cream. Ready Whip has one carb in it. I think I'm going to use the regular heavy whipping cream. And let's see what I get. I'm going to use heavy whipping cream. Heavy whipping, this heavy whipping cream is zero carbs as compared to the Ready Whip. Okay. Zero carbs. So we're still at zero carbs. I'm using my trusty shot glass measuring cup. Okay. I got this at the Dutch oven store. I filled it all the way up. It's a mini measure. My other ones are all dirty in the sink. <laughs> hey, shit happens like that, you know? No, I mean, it does. Stuff happens. Let's be realistic. I live in a camper. I only have so many measuring cups. I only have so many pots and pans. I only have so many dishes. That's why we use a lot of paper. So I'm going to just put four ounces of the mascarpone and I'm going to put one ounce of heavy whipping cream. I'm making this up as I go along, folks. I've never made this before. It just came to me that I would like this. Sometimes that happens. I'm going to get my monk fruit. Hold on. I'm using one tablespoon, one tablespoon of monk fruit. I blended it up with the blender. And it whipped, of course, the whipping cream whipped up with the cheese. It's a nice whipped up texture. And then I took some of these Lily chocolate mint baking chips. And these are made with stevia sweetener. And there's no sugar added. So actually they are three carbs for 26 chips. Well, I only took like four chips, five chips, and I grated them with my little trusty grater into little chocolate shreddings on top of there for flavor. And then I think I'm going to just like take like two pecans because pecans are probably the best nuts, one of the best nuts you could eat if you're on keto. And I'm going to crunch those up a little bit and put them in there, which would be like hardly any, not really any carbs at all. Look at that, that's just like, not even a teaspoon. And I sprinkle that in there. And I'm gonna mix it up and yum yum, nice dessert. It's a nice little sweet dessert. And if you, if you just portion it out and just have a little taste, it's like zero, one, below one carb. Okay, another one of my favorite treats is pepperoni and Swiss cheese. 
zero carbs make a great snack when you're watching TV or for a, a little hors d'oeuvre during the holidays. Next, for Christmas Eve breakfast, I'm making myself some pork rind fried bacon. And I'm going to make homemade zero carb syrup. I'm going to melt two sticks of butter. I'm going to use one egg and a little bit of cream to make my egg wash for my pork rinds. I'm going to use one fourth cup of heavy whipping cream, a half a cup of confectioner sugar, those are going to be, and a teaspoon of apple cider vinegar and a pinch of salt and some maple extract, and that's going in my syrup. So I had all those ingredients pinch of salt, one over the shoulder for good luck. And we're going to bring this to a boil, it says, the recipe says. In the meantime, all my stuff is ready to make my truffle and to make to bread my bacon. But I'm going to do the syrup first. So I added the teaspoon of apple cider vinegar. I, I only put a half a cup of powder swerve in there, confectioner swerve, zero carbs. And I put a fourth of a cup of cream, zero carbs, heavy whipping cream. And a fourth of a cup of water with the, excuse me, with a half a cup of butter. I use Land of Lakes butter, and you know what? I just thought about it. It was salted, so I probably shouldn't have added salt. Though it might be a little salty and less sweet. I don't know. We'll see. I don't usually add salt at all. But I thought, oh, salt pops the taste. So I'm going to let this... I'm going to make the um, syrup first. Because once it's made, I can always warm it up a little bit. But um, I'm in a camper, remember? So this is about Nomad Keto. It's going to be a keto syrup. And I'm going to have a jar. I also got a jar I got to pull out for the syrup that I have left so I could keep it in my fridge. Because now it'll already be made. Yum, yum. I'm also going to add some maple extract to this, but not yet. Because after I remove this from the heat, I'm going to add a half a teaspoon of baking soda, and then my extract will go in there. So here we go. I have very little kitchen space. This is it. Ladies and gentlemen, that's all I have. And you can see the only counter space I really have is right here. So I put a cutting board over my sink to extend my counter space. I'm kind of cramped. But I do want to tell you, remember I, in a previous video I talked about grinding up my pork rinds, you know, in advance so I have them for on the road well guess what I saw now y'all probably knew this and I didn't but look at what I found panko crumbs it's already poured there um, it's a breadless alternative to breadcrumbs gluten-free zero total carbs per serving yes awesome these are pork rinds already ground up what a deal I love it and they were only, they were under $6. It was five something, you know, five and change. But under $6, not counting tax. And what's great about it is it's their own container. And you know what? I bought a bag of pork rinds. It was like $2.99. And it, I used more than one bag to make that little bitty thing I had here. So what a deal. And I did, only had this like filled up halfway. So that's a great deal. I'm so glad I found those. They had them at Walmart and they had them at um, the Publix grocery store here in Florida. 
And I think they were cheaper at public. At, were they cheaper at public or Walmart? I don't remember. I have to look at the bag. Oh, I bought them at Walmart. So I think they were cheaper at Walmart. I can't be sure. Probably the same price. I don't know. So um, I'm going to, I got my egg um, wash ready for my bacon. I'm going to use up the rest. I do did buy maple bacon, but I have turkey bacon that I want to use up in the, from the fridge and um, that I normally have. So I am going to use up some of my turkey bacon when I make the chicken fried bacon. Why do they call it chicken fried? I don't get it. Because it's fried like you fry fried chicken. You fry it, batter it and fry it like fried chicken. If that's the reason, okay. But there's no chicken in it anywhere. So I call it pork rind fried chicken. Pork rind fried bacon. That's what I'm going to call it. Pork rind fried bacon. Instead of regular breading. Because most people make it with the same breading they use for their fried chicken. Mm. Coffee, yeah. It's a beautiful sunny day here in Florida. Yep, it's like going to be 80 degrees here on Christmas Eve. And I'll be right back. So the recipe says, let it boil for a minute. Well, I let it boil for a minute. And then it says, add baking soda. Now, that's no mistake, folks. I It is baking soda. Uh-huh. The recipe says baking soda, not baking powder. I went back and looked at it three times. So here is pure baking soda for baking. And it's a half a teaspoon. Well, I can't find my half a teaspoon thing. And it says, so I have to put in a half a teaspoon from my one teaspoon. So it says it's going to foam up a lot. And then add your flavoring. So there's my half a teaspoon. And I'm going to stir it and see how much it foams. It doesn't say keep it over the heat. They said just let it boil for one minute and then add the baking soda. And it also says to add the, there it goes, it's foaming up now, but not a whole lot. Ooh, foamy, foamy, foamy. It's not overheat. I turned off the heat. I'm guessing turn off the heat. It smells really buttery. And like I said, I only added a half a cup of this for confectioner's powdered sugar because sweetener. I'm not even gonna call it sugar because it's sweetener, and um, because usually half, half the time when they, it's like too sweet for me. So and now I'm gonna add maple extract. I purposely went and bought it, and I had to find it at Walmart because, um, I'll tell you what, you can't find a lot of extract. It's like I, I buy my vanilla extract in um, Mexico, but I'm having a hard time finding other flavors other than almond or vanilla in the store. So, But I did find the maple at Walmart by McCormick. Let me open that up and put that in. Okay, it says a quarter of a teaspoon of maple. So, you know, I kind of think I probably would like a little more than that, but... It's just flavoring. Oops. Whoops, I probably put too much in there now. Eh. You know, us Italians, we just eyeball it. Oh my God, it smells really good. And that's going to be to dip my chicken fried bacon in. Now, I'm already getting that ready. I got my bacon on top of my pork rinds. Although, honestly, I am using the spicy hot pork rinds, but when I used that spicy hot pork rinds with my chicken, I couldn't tell they were hot. So I'm going to use those up because now I have the panko crumbs that I was able to buy. Let me, probably hot here. Folks, I got to tell you, this is better this is better than Aunt Jemima. It is so good. I can't wait to put it over my chaffle and on my bacon. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it aside for now. I'm going to switch the plates.
Now I'm going to get my oil. I used this, bought this coconut oil from Walmart to fry in. It's better for you than um, any vegetable oil. But it's great. It's a one-to-one -one substitute for butter and other cooking oils. It's a mul it has multiple use. You can almost put it on your skin. But it um, keeps your skin really nice. It is zero carbs and better for you. And it, it cooks at higher heats. So since we're going to be frying bacon, and I can always put it in a grease holder and reuse the grease. You know, folks, just like I said about the I clean, by the way, I cleaned that off. You know, like I said, no one ever died from oven card poisoning. If that, if you did, then everybody who goes to McDonald's or Burger King or Wendy's, any of those fast food place that makes French fries would be dead because they do not change that oil every day. I think it's better to just, go, just do it one time, you know? So I'm not wasting anything here. I am going to put my Parmesan cheese. It's Parmesan and mozzarella cheese, kind of mixed up, grated Parmesan and mozzarella cheese into the leftover egg wash that I have, which is like egg and a little bit of cream. And I'm gonna use that for my truffle. I'm gonna make my truffle with that. And I could start that while these are cooking because they're almost done. It doesn't take that long for them to finish up. So I'm going to go ahead and get that truffle going. After mixing this up, I'm going to put it on that waffle iron and stick it on the fire. Okay, I've got my mixture on there. It's already starting to cook. I already sprayed it with the spray-on Carlini olive oil. We're going to close it up. We're going to lock it. We're going to let it cook for a couple of minutes. And have you ever seen one of these things, guys? It's your toast grabber. I left the tag on it, but um, you can get them usually at most stores and you got to look around. Walmart has them. You know, you, it's for you don't burn your fingers when you grab your toast out of the oven. I mean, out of the toaster, toast out of the toaster. Of course, when you don't have power, you don't have toast in the toaster. I am going to use it to remove my bacon. So, yeah, good idea, huh? I'm going to plate that sucker up. This is ready to go. It's, I've already taken it off. I probably left this one in there too long because I turned off the burner. And I'm going to hold on while I get it from the plate. I'm going to start plating this meal up. Yum, yum, yum. Oh, by the way, I, I flipped it over. That's what's nice about this thing. It's locked here. And you just flip it over to cook both sides. I'm gonna start planting this up while these are cooking. So here we go. I can lay that there, it's still hot, and I put the syrup back on the burner to warm it up because I had set it off to the side. Out there, raise your hand. Tell me, raise your hand if you put your, if you dip your bacon in syrup. I can see you guys, come on, all hands up. Come on, everybody. <laughs> They're great for taking your waffles out. Mine are a little stiff because they're I don't use them too often. I used to use them just for the toaster, but then it whew, all of a sudden it's like the light bulb went on in the refrigerator, you know. Yummy, yum, yum. You can cut these in half too, I suppose, if you want to. I might just do that. Ooh, I mean, it smells so good. Dip it in the butter. Mmm. Yum. Very good. Mmm. Delicious. Find the ones you like and then convert them to keto. Thanks for watching the Keto Nomad.